Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is Dr. Connie Chung. I have a extensive educational background. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, master's in nutrition, a doctorate in physical therapy, been a clinician for over 25 years, as well as a board certified in Institute of Functional Medicine in functional medicine. And I'm a ERYT certified at the 500 hour with Yoga Alliance. All that being said, I utilize yoga as a specific tool to help you to regulate your nervous system, to really empower you, to really reach in to your own essence and your healing power from within to heal from any kind of symptoms, whether it be physical, mental, and emotional, as well as chronic illnesses, I believe all the answers are within you, that we have a biochemical capacity and the ability to heal our own bodies if we can align from within, inside out. That's what we do here. Welcome, and I can't wait to get to know you better. Hey everyone, so yin yoga. Okay, so in Chinese medicine, it comes from the meridian theory. And in Chinese medicine, there's two energies, right? There's the yang energy where it's like a high flow, very movement dynamic, like the vinyasa class. Yin is very contractile. You're holding poses for a long time. The thought is being in this contracted state, like holding poses and easing into it, there is energetic channels that open up as we have tissue resiliency that builds from holding those poses in stillness and paying attention to those areas of your body. So you need to understand sort of what you're going after. Um, you know, it varies from 45 minutes, holding the pose for 45 minutes all the way up to 10 minutes. There is really no right or wrong in yoga. Um, but the way I like to think of yin is you always want to have a yin component. I really want this to be a meditative session to where you can like really feel into your articulations and your joints and figure out sort of those uh, thresholds. Always being mindful of what you're stretching. I'm going to give you always the alkaline method version, the polarity pull, so you can access your joints in a more neurologically connected way. So it might be a little bit different from what you're used to, but all the same, I'm going to take you into some yin poses. And I decided to hold the poses for two minutes and see how that goes for you guys. And then you guys can kind of give me input as to what more you would like to see more of. I know many of you have looked at the class rosters. A lot of you have low back pains. A lot of you love yin for the zen and peace that it brings. And it's definitely one of those classes where you can shift your body from the sympathetic fight or flight response to more of the zen and calm. So really paying attention to your breath and really being and connected with your body is the whole goal with yin. Okay, so wherever you are, you can even be in Sukhasana. I want you to just place the forearms forward. And I'm doing this more for me because I've been struggling with de Corvain syndrome, which is a tendonitis of this thumb joint. And um, it's just not going away. <laughs> it's because I love doing yoga and I'm constantly on it. So I want you to be here and I want you to see if you can go forward. In fact, that's not giving me much of a stress, stretch at all. So I'm going to come onto my knees and I'm going to pull back and sit into my heels and I really feel the stretch into my, my wrists. And I'm going to rock forward and ease back into my stretch. I'm pushing and I'm pushing through the fingertips to take away because I like to have in what's called an active stretch that keeps us honest and activating the ligaments and tendons in a way to keep our stretches a bit more safe. Pulling back, going forward and pulling back and going forward and pulling back. Good, and back. I'm gonna place the top of my wrist down. 
like this and going forward and back. Going forward and back. Going forward and back. Going forward and back. Ooh, that's pretty heavy. So I'm gonna start out with child's pose. So I want you to bring your knees apart. You're gonna walk your hands forward. I'm gonna unwire myself here. Okay, walk your hands forward and bring it down. If you've got, you're used to using bolsters at the office or at the center, you can place like a pillow and I have two pillows. The whole idea is you can be at your max, but completely relaxed and go down. And you can really stretch into this hip space. If you have those tight hip flexors or hips, like this stretch might be like a lot for you. You can pull the uh, two pillows apart so that your head can be cradled down. I really like to keep my hands above my head and stretching the sides of my body as well. So I'm gonna do that and go down. I'm able to rest. I wanna make sure you guys can hear me. So avoid my hitting my mic with my hair. Go down. I'm going to place my shin or my chin on the pillow here, on the bottom pillow. That allows me to release all my neck musculature and it allows me more room here to stretch into my underarms and the lats. And going pushing down into my hips allows me to really relax the lumbar fascia. And I'm going to stay here just like that. Taking a deep breath in and out. And remember, you guys can feel free to place a blanket under your knees if that's an issue for you. And just stay there. Ease into the hips, stretch the hands away, take a deep full breath in, and with exhalation, go deeper. Leave the tension out of the jaws, that space between your brows. Loosen up that joint, your jaw joint, and soften your ears, the area around your ears. Allow those muscles to relax as you inhale and exhale. Relax the back of your neck. Really ease into that stretch. Good. I'm going to get rid of my pillows, but for those of you who need it, certainly take it with you. I'm going to keep my legs here in this child's pose, feet together, knees apart, but keeping my pelvis square, I'm going to walk my left hand over to the right and then the right side. I'm going to stretch into the left side of the body. Placing my forehead down on the mat. I'm going to ease down, stretching the left side of the body. Relaxing my hands, sinking deeper into my left hip, keeping evenness in my hips. Noticing the contact of my left arm and my right arm on the mat, as well as the shins and the top of my feet. Taking a deep breath in and exhaling down. Taking a deep breath in and exhale. Again, pay close attention to that area between the eyebrows. Loosen up your temples. 
That area above the nasal fold or below the nasal fold. Relax your jaw. Relax the back of your neck. Taking a deep breath in. And exhaling as you sink your tailbone down further. See if you can pull the navel to the spine. Give it a little squeeze in the cord, noticing the loosening of the low back fascia. Taking a deep breath in and exhale. Taking a deep breath in and exhale. I'm going to slowly come back to center and walk over, walk my hands over or my right arm over to the left. I'm going to reach far, sinking my right hip down to my right heel this time, lowering my forehead down on the mat, stretching away, taking a deep breath in. And exhaling, sinking down into the right hip. Taking a deep breath in. And exhaling. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale. Taking a deep breath in and exhale, checking the space between your brows, relaxing your temples, loosening your jaw, area around the ears, the back of the neck. Relax the facial muscles, taking a deep breath in and exhale. Letting it all go, sinking deeper into your hips. Seeing if you can squeeze your core to loosen up your back. Noticing the contacts of your body onto the mat. And gently pressing down every part that's in contact just to give it a little push and then relaxing into it. That'll help you check yourself to know you're completely relaxed. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale and slowly you're gonna come back. So from child's pose, you're gonna gently come forward, walk your hands forward, and settle your spine all the way down. Come on to the forearms, shoulders drawn down. Press the top of your mat or uh, press the front thigh and your shin and the top of your foot down onto the mat. And as you do so, really pull the navel to the spine, pull the shoulders down, pull the chest forward and gaze forward. Push through the forearms to have this pull. You should feel a good pull and stretch. And I'm not sure if it's a stretch so much as it is really opening your chest forward. It's an active stretch. And check yourself. Do not sink. That's not the point. Just really support yourself. This is more of an active stretch. So just be aware, shoulders drawn down, chin forward, and feel the myofascial stretch on the front side of your abdomen, near the chest, 
really draw the hands down or the forearm down to pull the shoulders down. As you do that, see if you can pull the navel up, surging up through the crown of your head, taking a deep breath in and exhaling, shoulders drawn down. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Shoulders drawn down. I'm always like shaking in my shoulders, but know that it's a static activation. Those of you who have low back pain and this is not feeling very good, make sure you support the abdomen or you might want to further come down like this. Okay, so I'm sorry I said it too late, but this time, if you're good, come up high on your hands. The further forward you can reach, the more compression in the low back I feel like it gives you. The closer, well, I guess the closer you come forward, you're going to allow yourself to go forward. So let's reach forward, but I want you to bring it down a little bit. So the core muscles is what's holding you. We're gonna only hold this for a minute for this one because I don't want, many of you might not be able to do this. You're pushing actively all through five fingers, really pushing, 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 keeping a slight bend in the elbows to hold them accountable. You're pushing and pulling the chest up, really feeling the stretch, pulling the navel, and really grounding the top of your pelvis down so you have something to pull away from. Shoulders drawn down, full length of the top of your legs down, anchoring you. Because you always want to have something to pull away from. Taking a deep breath in and exhale. Okay, from here, I want you to come all the way down, tuck your toes, and if you're able to, Sink back to, um, I guess, child's pose. Those of you who can, come up, down the dog, and just stretch yourselves out here, taking a deep breath in, and exhale, and just really sink those heels down, just get a little bit of a release. You're gonna gaze forward, first leg is going to be the right side. So, Please be mindful. The closer the shin is towards you or the heel is towards your pelvis, the easier it's going to be. The further away it is, the harder it's going to be. But because we're going to be in this position for a long time, I want you to go do the thing that's going to be the least uh, painful. So I'm going to use my blanket knowing fully well that my ankle, my malleolus or my ankle joint is going to dig down and I don't like it after a while when I do yin. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to walk forward and easing down, I'm going to come down here. So here's what I want you to do. The full side of this right leg, the outside, I want you to push down. And the full length of this back leg, the front thigh and the full length, push down. You're going to feel this activation and it's like you're pushing the floor away. Push down with your forearms, hold one, two, three, and then release. And go all the way down to your edge. And keep doing that. Push down, push down, push down, and go down further. Push down, push down, push down, push down, and go down further. And keep doing that. I'm at my max. So I'm just going to go to my position. I'm going to feel slightly strained, but I'm going to sort of feel my myofascial strains and meet it with ease. I'm gonna relax my facial muscles, loosen my jaw, loosen my shoulders. I'm gonna ease down. I'm gonna press down a little bit to gain a little bit more. 
And again, when you press the floor away with the length of your body, it sort of gives you that counter force to relax up against. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale, shoulders completely relaxed. Taking a deep breath in and exhale. I might sometimes feel the numbing in my joints, but I'm gonna breathe through. So gently come up. You have to come out of this very gently. So come high up, tucking my left toe. I'm gonna press back into down dog because that helps me to reset my body. And really reset my body. I'm gonna pull my left foot forward and to sink down. Use your props. Your bolster or your pillow can be under the pelvis to create a nice opening. Can't really see you. So I would appreciate it because I can have all modifications for all kinds of bodies, but I don't really know what I'm dealing with. Um, in terms of your classes. Do the best you can and ease down into it. Press the floor away with the full length of the right leg and the outside of the left hip and lower down. Press down and relax. And I will make sure to share notes with the instructors to know who has what limitations so I can be a little bit more clear about what modifications and choosing my um, poses. But I'm gonna kind of alter things a bit and um, make it interesting for you. So for right now, press down, like you're, wherever you are, press down away from the floor. The Kind of activate the opposing force and then ease down into it and taking a deep breath in and exhale. Taking a deep breath in and exhale, being mindful of relaxing my shoulders, relaxing into my hips, back of my neck relaxed, easing down over the left hip, breathing in and exhaling. Breathing in and exhaling. One last push. And relax. Keep pushing. And I'm just looking at the timer, you guys. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale. So there's my cue. Next is Baddha Konasana. So I'm gonna push back into down dog very slowly. That was a very deep and intense stretch. Just keep in mind sometimes in a yin class, many, many students have emotional releases because of such an intensity of this practice. So if you're at home right now, having a difficult time settling down, this might be the just the thing that you need. Okay. I'm gonna sit on my mat and I'm gonna pull my feet together, sitting up nice and tall. So here's what I want to um, kind of emphasize. If you have a difficult time pulling up and out, like let me show you. If you have a very difficult time sitting up like that, I want you to use a block to elevate the pelvis, okay? That's gonna enable you to be forward. 
And if you need to, stack multiple pillows under the knee so you can go forward with that extension as opposed to pulling in that way. So keep that in mind. Because I have no restrictions, I'm gonna go this way, sitting up nice and tall, really getting that extension. I'm gonna go as far forward as possible. I'm gonna reach my hands forward, relaxing and easing down, shoulders down. Relax the forehead down. Take a deep breath in, and it's pretty intense in my hips when I go all the way down. So again, I'm going to press down through the length of my thighs to ease into the stretch. Sometimes when I go deep into the stretch, my coccyx or uh, my sit bones elevate because my flexibility is there in my hips to allow for that. So it, it's sort of like going beyond. Is it healthy or not? Well, I make sure it's healthy by activating my muscles. So I press down, press the knees further down, and then see if I can further relax into it. If at any point, if the stretch gets a little too intense, please pull out. Like literally pull out and stay in that position. Focus on the third eye. Because I want this to be an inward experience. Relax the area between your eyebrows. Relax your ears, your shoulders. Relax your shoulders. Relax your mouth, the area around the jaws. Taking a deep breath in and exhaling. Taking a deep breath in and exhaling. Deep breath in and exhale. Deep breath in and exhale. And I'm going to come back nice and slow. I'm going to end with my favorite pose. If this is a little bit too much for you, you might want to put, um, and I feel like it might be okay for you, but um, you might use the block. You need two blocks, first of all. You might use it lengthwise, and then you might want to use one for your neck. Okay, and as you progress, you might not need either of the blocks or you might want to raise this one sideways. I'm going to choose to raise it sideways. Let me show you what I'm talking about so you guys can go into it. I'm going to pull my amplifier out to the side. I'm going to ease my back. It's like I want this block to be between my shoulder blades. And then I want this to support my head. And for the legs, either you can keep them together and do supta baddha konasana, or you can keep it straight. Because we just came out of uh, baddha konasana, you might want to just keep it straight. Now, the block might be like, oh, really intense for you. So if that's you, placing the blanket over the block, very good idea. Okay? I don't like the blanket over it, and I... I'm gonna to try to see if I can get rid of that because I want a little bit more extension for me. This really opens up the thoracic spine. It's a good way to end this because it really allows for gentle opening. I like this because I'm in front of the computer all day and this really allows me to stretch the front side. My arms are gonna be out to the side and really for this one, I'm just gonna relax my shoulders, relax my head. Taking a deep breath in, really focusing on ribcage expansion and contraction. I don't like how this is positioned, so I'm going to go a little bit. So you guys are still on a time, so keep doing what you're doing. But you might just kind of play with the placement here. 
and come back to the segment. And if it's to a point where something like takes your breath away because it's so uncomfortable, because this can certainly do that, what I'm doing right now, it's pretty aggressive. So be careful. Deep breath in and exhale. Relax. So when you come out of this pose, use your arms, place them next to you, and either you roll off very carefully or you can start to pull up your chin, use your arms, and come back. For this, after this, I would highly recommend that you enjoy um, Shavasana, where you lay in a corpse pose and just let things sink. But I hope you enjoyed this yin yoga. I promise it'll get better over time. I just wanted to kind of get you guys into um, practicing the yin again. So with that, I'll see you guys on the next class. Thank you for watching. Your time is valuable to me and I appreciate you being here. If you found my videos helpful, I put out weekly videos for you so that you can benefit from it. So I would love it if you subscribed as well as comment, review me, follow me on social at Instagram, YouTube, as well as TikTok at Dr. Connie Chung. I'd love to hear from you. DM me, comment below, and let's connect. I'll see you guys all later.